Institute here at Holy Family Catholic Church in Austin, Texas, we have a tradition of some many years now of having a Bible study where we read the scriptures for the upcoming Sunday, but because we never have Bible study during Holy Week due to the activity on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we're never able to study the Sunday scriptures. In fact, we never study the Triduum scriptures, which is why during the last three weeks, we've studied the Holy Thursday scriptures, the Good Friday scriptures, and the Easter vigil scriptures. The church has a tradition of having vigils. Vigil is the word used for a mass that is the night before. So that, for instance, the Saturday afternoon or evening mass in some churches is called a vigil mass. It counts as a Sunday mass. But remember, for our ancient Jewish ancestors, when did the new day begin? In an era without watches, they didn't know when midnight was. So the new day began at sunset. sunset. And so for the ancient church, they would have vigil masses on the night before a certain event. So the Easter vigil is the night before Easter day. So the vigil will have one set of readings, and then on Easter, we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord, and we have another set of scriptures on Easter Sunday. We see that the first reading comes from the Acts of the Apostles. Remember, during the Easter season, that's the only time of the year when we don't have Old Testament readings, readings from the Hebrew scriptures. During the remainder of the year, outside of the Easter season, the first reading always comes from the Hebrew scriptures what we sometimes call the Old Testament. During the Easter season, however, all of the scriptures, the first reading, the second reading, and the gospel come to us from the New Testament. Only the Psalm, the Psalm alone, comes to us from the Hebrew scriptures. Shall we take a look at the first reading for Easter Sunday? It comes to us from the 10th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. We had read earlier about how it was that Peter betrayed Jesus, not once, not twice, but three times. Now in the Acts of the Apostles, we have the story of how it is that Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, is now going out and preaching to the people. This is Acts chapter 10. Rudy, would you like to read for us the first reading? The first reading of Acts. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened to all over Judea? beginning in Galilee after the baptism of John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are, witness we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, this man God raised on the third day and granted that he not that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Who wrote this first reading? Who wrote the Acts of the Apostles? That was written by Luke. Remember, Luke wrote two books in the Bible. What two books did Luke write? The Gospel of Luke was part one, and then Acts of the Apostles is part two. So here in part two, we have Peter, who had previously denied Jesus, now going and preaching. It's this fascinating story, which really summarizes our Christian faith. How it was that Jesus, uh, these events, uh, what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, beginning in Galilee, where was Galilee? That was the Northern Territory where Jesus was from, Nazareth in Galilee, and Judea, the Southern District where Jerusalem is located. These events, the news is spreading all over Galilee and Judea of these events. What began with this baptism by John the Baptist in the Jordan River, he's summarizing our faith. Up in Galilee, well, after, as a result of that baptism, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. Here we're having that Trinitarian theology that we saw in the Gospels. When Jesus was baptized, a voice came from heaven. 
God the Father, and a dove is sent, descended, the Holy Spirit. How did the God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, and he went about doing good and casting out demons and performing all the miracles that he did? We are witnesses to all of this, including to how he died, death on a tree, crucifixion, and how he was raised on the third day. After he was raised, he commissioned us to preach and to testify so that all who might believe, all who believe might experience the forgiveness of their sins. Peter is no longer the coward that he was before Jesus' crucifixion. Oh, I don't know who he is. Even swearing in his denial of Jesus. Here we have uh, Peter filled with the Holy Spirit, embracing the message of Jesus who died and rose from the dead. Because of the apostles' eyewitness accounts. He was now back to them. He was now witnessing. And witness is a loaded word because the Greek word for witness is martyr. He was witnessing, he was being a martyr. And of course, how would Peter's life end according to the tradition of the church? He martyr. would be martyred. His even his death would witness to his faith. So here in this first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we find Peter witnessing to this new faith in Christ who died and rose again. Where does the responsorial psalm come from on Easter Sunday? Psalm 118, a famous psalm. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice. Preachers love this one, especially in various church traditions. They get up and their first enthusiastic thing they say to the congregation is, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord. Essentially, it's a hymn of praise. But why we have it on Easter is that third verse. The stone which the builders rejected, Jesus dying on a tree, the stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone on which the church is built. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. The stone that was rejected, now the cornerstone. Questions or comments on the responsorial psalm? Beautiful psalm for Easter. On Easter Sunday, we have two choices for the second reading. We could have a reading from the letter to the Colossians, a pseudonymous work. We don't know the author, but a beautiful, beautiful uh, account. Or we could read from Paul's first extant letter to the Corinthians, where Paul talks about yeast leavening the dough. How does we need to get rid of the old yeast to, to make room for the new yeast? Because what were our Jewish siblings doing, right? They had certain old beliefs and practices, mm -hmm. and Jesus came and turned a lot of that upside down. It's time to get rid of the old, the old wineskins, Jesus would say, and to bring in new wineskins, to bring in new yeast, Paul would say. Paul says, let us celebrate the feast, not with old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with unleavened bread, the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Becky, do you want to read our second read from the letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, verses 1 to 4? Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Hey, thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, if you were raised with Christ, seek what is above. If you're raised with Christ, remember all of us who, who, who were baptized in Christ died. And back in the old days, we didn't just sprinkle water over your head. We took you down to the river where plunging under the water was a symbol of you dying with Christ. And when you came out of the water, you enjoyed new life. Water was a highly charged sacrament. So for those of you who have been baptized, who've been raised with Christ, seek what is above. Don't seek the things of this earth. Beautiful image, huh? Right? Oh, please, Lord, let me win the lottery. Oh, wait, I'm thinking like a person of this earth. Right? 
seek what is above, seek the things of heaven, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Christ is not dead. Christ has been raised and now sits at the right hand of God the Father. For you have died in baptism, and your life is hidden with Christ. When Christ your life appears, you too will appear with him in glory. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. The ancient church believed that Christ is going to appear any moment. When Christ does appear, you are going to appear with him in glory. He is going to take you with him to your heavenly home. Questions or comments on the second reading from the letter to the Colossians? We see how it is, why it is that we would have that on Easter. We were all raised with Christ in baptism. And the gospel comes from the 20th chapter of John. Remember that John only had 21 chapters, but the 21st chapter was added later, which meant that John chapter 21 was the last chapter of John originally, and it was John's story of the resurrection. And we tell this story every Easter morning. John, of course, has the highest theology of the four gospels. It was the last gospel to be written. But the other beautiful thing about it is the story of it's the story of Mary Magdalene becoming the apostle to the apostles. In plain English, when the risen Christ appeared, to whom did the risen Christ appear? To the emperor? To Pontius Pilate? To religious leaders of the day? No. no. The risen Christ appeared to women, namely to Mary the Magdala. And she went off and told the others, which is why we often refer to her as the apostle. She was the one sent to tell the others who were sent. Sort of like the Paschal Annunciation. <laughs> Paschal Annunciation, the Paschal. Good news. Terry Ann, would you like to read the gospel for us? Yes. Uh, the gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first. So when did this story take place? The first day of the week, which is what? Sunday. Sunday. So Christians had a new Sabbath, a new day of the Lord. Instead of worshiping with our Jewish siblings on Saturday, Sabado, which is their Sabbath, now Christians celebrate on Sunday morning. The Christians would gather to celebrate with the rising sun. The first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came. It was still dark outside, and she could see through the darkness that the stone was gone. Yikes. What does she do? Does she go inside? She runs and she tells the others. Then Peter and the beloved, the one whom Jesus loved, both ran to the tomb. After Mary Magdalene has, has told them the story already, they've taken the Lord. The Lord is not there. I'm not finding the Lord's body. The beloved arrived first, saw the cloths. Peter, though, but he didn't go in. Interestingly, there's this, this deference to Peter even in the early Christian community, Peter had a special place in the community. Peter went in first, and the beloved disciple went in after him, and the beloved disciple saw, and what's John's gospel all about? Believing. He saw, and he believed. He didn't need Jesus to rise from the dead in his presence to believe. He saw, and he believed. The message for John's community would be, for those of you who haven't seen, do you believe like John? 
Or are you like another story that we're going to hear in another week? Are you like doubting Thomas? He says, yeah, no. I won't believe that until I see it. Seeing is believing. Do you believe even without seeing? <coughs> and so those are Easter scriptures. The Acts of the Apostles. Peter, now filled with the Holy Spirit, proclaiming the risen Christ. Colossians, those of us who've been raised with Christ are not thinking so much about the things of this earth, but thinking about what's up above, because when Jesus comes back, he's going to take us all to glory. And then the gospel, that first Easter story of Mary Magdalene being the apostle, the apostle running back to Peter and the beloved, saying, the Lord, they've taken his body, and then running out, and of the beloved disciple, seeing and believing. Questions or comments on the Easter scriptures that we'll be hearing proclaimed in 11 days? Pretty powerful. The central mystery of our faith. As Christians, we celebrate Easter every Sunday, but the early church had an insight. While the Romans and others celebrate their pagan spring festivals, why don't we celebrate life as well, but we'll celebrate in a different way. Everlasting. We'll celebrate our everlasting life in Christ. We've been raised with Christ. And then, of course, all sorts of other symbols like Easter rabbits and Easter eggs and everything else gets mixed in with Easter and it takes on other meanings. But there's something beautiful about us celebrating the resurrection of Christ on Easter Day. But was, that was... Wasn't it just because of a conversion, an easier transition from pagans up north to incorporate some of their culture? Certainly, certainly. Into it yeah. At the same time? Yeah. In fact, uh, we refer to it in anthropology and sociology, we refer to it as inculturation. Right? You take a, something from someone else's culture and it makes it easier for them to well, come to it, it. Isn't the egg the life that Easter is? symbol of life. Yeah, isn't the egg? Think about what's inside an egg. Yeah. I mean, that's the potential for life right there. And there's also something beautiful about it because the ancient church gave up eggs for Lent. Can you imagine going 40 days without eggs? And so what happens after going 40 days without eggs? They were ready to have eggs. Well, then that's where we got Sunday being the first day of the week. First day of the week. In other cultures, other days begin the week. And since Spanish-speaking cultures, often you'll see the calendars begin with Monday. Monday is the first day of the week, concluding with the weekend. Saturday, Sunday are the weekend. Ready to celebrate Easter? We conclude with a prayer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Amen. as it was in the beginning, as now and forever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Looking forward to celebrating Holy Week and Easter.